I'm here out in front of the Scottish Parliament building uh, on a rather lovely day uh, to chat to you a little bit about my political history and my personal biases so that when I start chatting about policy soon and I say it's good or bad, you can be like, oh, he would say that. Uh, let's start with me as a person, because if you actually know enough about someone, you can probably guess how they vote. There's a lot that's decided more by their background and the de demographics that they fit into rather than any conscious decision that they make. The most obvious of this in Britain is uh, class, with the working class traditionally voting for Labour and the middle class voting Conservative. Uh, this doesn't fit quite as well in Scotland now that we've got the SNP doing so well and also Margaret Thatcher remaining that even the middle, some of the middle class didn't want to vote Conservative for a while. As you can probably tell from this, I'm white and male, I'm 24 years old, just squeaking into that 16 to 24 year old age category when I'm doing surveys. Um, and I'm Scottish, originally from Dunfermline in Fife, and uh, now living in Edinburgh. I was brought up with a stainless steel spoon in my mouth, meaning that I wasn't massively wealthy and I couldn't have everything that I wanted, but I never went without anything that I needed, be it food, school, uniforms, there was always a roof over my head and that safety there. After spending my childhood in Dunfermline, I then moved to St Andrews for university, came out with a chemistry degree, and met a lot of different people whilst I was there. It's a very different environment from what I was used to. A lot more well-off people and a lot more international students, um, particularly English and American, which can really broaden the worldview. I now live in Enro with my girlfriend, where I work in a bar, which would typically make me work in class, but thanks to Nikki going out and earning a lot of money whilst I stay home and make these videos, um, I would probably consider myself to be more middle class. Probably the most important things in terms of my background is that one of my parents is a member of the Lib Dems and has been for quite a while. Not exactly an active member, but still paying uh, the party dues and still instilling in me some of the values that come from that party. What did happen due to that party membership, and living in the firm in particular, is that I first met Willie Rennie, the now leader of the Scottish Liberal Democrats, in 2006. He was aiming to become a candidate for Parliament, and was the candidate, so I ended up leafleting for him and a few other Lib Dem candidates in other elections. I also interviewed him as part of my Modern Studies dissertation in 2008. In 2009, I did a week's work experience in the building behind me with my Lib Dem MSP, Jim Tolson, although that came about through school rather than any party connections. I joined the Lib Dems myself in 2009 and let my membership expire in about 2012 or 13. It wasn't any sort of grand political gesture, I just wasn't into politics as much anymore, especially party politics. Based on a lot of what I've just told you, my voting history won't surprise you. In 2010, I voted for Willie Rennie when he was trying to keep him firm on West Fife. And in 2011, I gave both my votes to the Lib Dems and voted yes in the AV referendum, a referendum that I almost forgot happened. In the 2012 council elections, I first voted for an independent local candidate who I knew personally, um, followed by the Lib Dems. Um, in truth, I can't really remember how I voted in the 2014 European elections. I think it was probably Green trying to keep out UKIP, but that didn't work. In the all-important India ref, I voted yes, uh, but I should point out that it's not a major issue for me. I'm not exactly going to join the camp down the road. Uh, I want a better Scotland, but I don't think that's exclusively going to happen either in or out of the Union. I kind of just see independence as something that is going to happen. Maybe not soon, maybe, maybe it'll take 50 or 100 years, but it's probably going to happen, and I reckon it'll be easier if we can get a head start. And in the most recent election last year, I voted Green. Uh, I knew SNP would win the seat, which they did, and I thought I could help the Greens keep their deposit, which they did, so that worked. But for this election, I'm definitely going to vote for... Uh, I would tell you, but I don't know myself. As you can probably tell from what I've said, I'm a lot more likely to vote someone like the Greens or the Lib Dems than I am for the SNP or the Conservatives, but I haven't fully ruled out any of the major parties. I also haven't done anywhere near enough research into my own constituency, uh, Edinburgh Eastern, the constituency that happens to contain the Parliament. Um, in the last two Scottish Parliament elections, uh, it elected Kenny McCaskill, the former SNP Justice Secretary. Uh, he won by about 5% from Labour in both elections, with Conservatives and Lib Dems being a distant uh, third and fourth place. However, this year he's not seeking re-election. There's going to be a newcomer fighting his corner for the SNP. But fighting the corner for Labour is Kezia Dugdale, the party leader. So it'll be interesting to see whether an established personality can be the more popular party. Um, Kezia Dugdale is also on the list for Lothian, as is Ruth Davidson, meaning that she will definitely be returned to Parliament somehow. So there you go, my political history and potential bias laid bare for all to see. I'll be starting videos on policies soon, probably starting with income tax, as that's been a really big issue so far in the campaign, but I'm still waiting on the last few manifestos to be published. I'm Keith, I've been chatting about me. A little bulldog just walked past me.